Get out your notes and outline. You'll find the message this morning, How Much Do You Love Jesus? I do have a transition story I'd like to share with you. It says, a government inspector came up to Farmer John one day and told him that he was going to inspect his farm for any illegal activity. Farmer John told him that he could inspect anything he wanted to, just don't go into my north pasture. The inspector said, I can go anywhere I please. I have the authority of the United States government. He then reached into his back pocket and said, do you see this badge? He poked the badge right under Farmer John's nose and said, this badge says I can go anywhere I want to. Farmer John just walked away and continued his work. A little while later, Farmer John looked in his north pasture and saw his bull charging the government inspector, chasing him and gaining ground with every step the inspector took. Farmer John began to yell at the running inspector, show him your badge, show him your badge. <laughs> How much do you love Jesus? How much do you love Jesus? Between the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus was 40 days, 40 days when Jesus was with his disciples, Jesus was with the multitudes. He had a very important ministry during those 40 days. And this morning we're going to see where Jesus is going to test the love of one of his 12 disciples, Peter. He's going to find out just how much Peter loves him. I'm going to make a statement this morning. Uh, it isn't up for any debate or anything like that, but I want to make a statement. I love my wife, Harriet. I love my wife. Do you believe that I love my wife? Okay. What if I loved her like we sometimes love Jesus? Now, we say that we love Jesus. If you're a Christian here this morning, you say that you love Jesus. I say that I love Jesus. All Christians say that we love Jesus. But what if I loved my wife the way sometimes we say that we love Jesus? For example, what if there are times when I don't like being with her, but I love her? There are times when I don't want to talk to her, but I love her. I might go for days without talking to her, but I love her. When I do talk to her, it's usually because I want to ask her for something, or maybe just for a few seconds before we eat a meal, but I love her. And when I do talk to her, I find my mind often wandering uh, and thinking about other things, but I love her. Now, she's not always a part of my everyday life, and I think more about her on Sunday than I do any other day of the week, but I love her. When I meet with other husbands and we get together, what we do is we sing songs about our wives, and sometimes I'll even talk publicly to the rest of the husbands for about 30 to 45 minutes about how much I love her. She's written me love letters I've collected those love letters in a book. I have a book of them, but I don't read them as often as I should, and some of them I don't read at all. But I love her. I give her a little pocket change every week, as long as it doesn't cut too deeply into how much I want to spend on myself. I just don't care to have very much to do with her and make her a vital part of my everyday life. But I love her. Now, if I said these things about my wife, how many of you would think that I really loved her? Not too many. And yet, how many times do we say these things about Jesus? And we need to remember that we say these things about Jesus without realizing it, and we still say that we love him. You see, it's easy to say that we love the Lord, isn't it? It's easy to say. 
But if we treated our wives or our husbands like we treated Jesus, then we wouldn't have a very happy marriage. And we need to remember that we are the bride of Christ. But these things that I said are not the grounds for a very happy marriage. We are married to Christ. So what kind of a marriage relationship do we have with him? Well, this is what Jesus wanted to find out with his a disciple, Peter. Earlier, we find out, before the scripture this morning, we find out Jesus was with his disciples on the Sea of Galilee. They'd fished all night, and they'd caught nothing. And then Jesus comes along, and he says, cast the net on the other side. And they did, and they hit the mother load. I mean, they just gathered them in, the boats were about to sink and all that. Jesus is now on shore, and he has breakfast all ready for the disciples. After breakfast, Jesus goes to Peter publicly in front of the other disciples. And here we find the conversation that Jesus has with Peter. We're going to listen in on that conversation. Turn with me to John chapter 21. John chapter 21, and we will read the conversation. John 21, 15 through 17. John 21 and verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now I want you to notice here what Jesus asked Peter. He says, do you love me? Do you love me? Notice how many times Jesus asked Peter this question. How many times? Three times. Why do you think he asked him three times? Maybe because it was three times that Peter denied Jesus. You see, a threefold denial demanded a threefold confession. Think about Peter, think about how he must have felt during the last few weeks after the resurrection of Jesus. He had seen Jesus just about every day. Peter had said to Jesus at one time, he said, even if everybody else forsakes you, I never will. That's what he said to Jesus earlier. Peter had said, Lord, I'm ready to die for you. But Peter also denied him three times. You see, Peter did love Jesus and Peter had no intention of letting Jesus down, but he did. Peter loved Jesus, but Peter had also failed Jesus. And right now, Peter's failure was in the forefront of his mind. That's all he could think about. It's all he'd been thinking about for weeks. It had been eating him up. Peter was thinking this whole time, what must Jesus think of me after what I did? Denying knowing him three times. Will Jesus ever forgive me? Boy, I really blew it. I'm a total failure. And that's how Peter thought of himself, as a failure at this time. I read something the other day about a failure. A lady failed the written driving test four times. After the fifth attempt, she was determined to pass. But the test had the same question. You are driving at 60 miles per hour. On your right is a wall. On your left is a cliff. On the road, you see an old man and you see a young man. What will you hit? The woman walked up to the examiner and said, I've answered this question all four times. I'll hit the wall, I'll hit the cliff, I'll hit the old man, I'll hit the young man. Yet all four times I failed. How is this possible? What am I supposed to hit? 
And the examiner replied, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. She was a failure. Peter seemed like a failure. He had let Jesus down. Have you ever felt this way with Jesus? Have you ever felt like you've let him down, failed him? Have you ever felt like Jesus could never love you again after something you've done in your life? After you've failed him so many times? Have you ever felt like you're not worthy of his love? Well, let me tell you, we are not worthy of his love. Peter had made some pretty bold statements about how much he loved Jesus. But when it came down to crunch time, Peter bombed out and he let Jesus down. And what Jesus is trying to do now is Jesus wants to restore Peter back into fellowship with him. And that's what Jesus wants to do with anybody who's fallen out of fellowship with Jesus. Jesus wants to restore fellowship with us. In spite of our failures, in spite of our denials, in spite of our disappointing him and breaking his heart and rejecting his love, Jesus wants to restore us back into fellowship with him. Listen to how Jesus does this. Look in verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? First of all, notice what he calls him. He calls him Simon son of Jonah. Jesus doesn't call him Peter. Now Jesus had changed his name from Simon, son of Jonah, to Peter. And he says, you are now Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all of that. So they've been calling him Peter, but now Jesus calls him Simon, son of Jonah. He doesn't call him the rock. He doesn't call him the solid rock. He doesn't call him Rocky, because his life has changed. He failed Jesus. Peter doesn't feel like a strong rock. Peter hadn't been acting like a strong rock. Peter hadn't had his footing on a rock-solid foundation. And so Jesus doesn't call him Peter here. So Jesus goes back to Peter's old name, Simon, son of Jonah. Since Peter had been acting like the old Simon, that's what Jesus calls him goes back to the name before Peter declared his strong faith in Jesus. Now, Jesus wants Peter to be honest with him. He wants Peter to lay it on the line. He wants Peter to come clean with him and his love, to see just how much he really did love Jesus. Verse 15 again. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Now, what is Jesus talking about here? Do you love me more than these what? But he's asking them the question, do you love me more than these? There are a lot of theories about that. Do you love me more than these things? Simon, do you love me more than these things? Do you love me more than these fish and these fishing nets and these boats and the fishing business and the family business? Do you love me more than these things? You see, Peter was a fisherman before Jesus called him to be a disciple. And Peter left his fishing business, the family business, to become one of his disciples. Did Peter love Jesus enough to sacrifice a more comfortable and lucrative lifestyle to follow Jesus? Peter had gone back to the fishing business. And so Jesus is asking him, do you love me more than these and these things? Does Peter love Jesus that much, or is he going to go back to fishing? How many things in our life get in the way of us loving Jesus? What kind of things are we putting ahead of Jesus in our life? Now, there are some important things in our life, very important things in our life, but they should not be put ahead of Jesus in our life. Our job is important. Our money is important. Our toys are important, our pleasure, our hobbies, our time. It's all important, very important things. But are we putting these things ahead of our love for Jesus? That's what Jesus is asking Peter here, and that's what he's asking us. Do we love Jesus more than we love these things? These other things are okay, but do we love Jesus more than them? That's what Jesus is asking Peter, and that's what Jesus is asking each one of us here this morning. 
So he asked Peter, he said, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these things? Maybe these things, maybe he means this. Do you love me more than these other disciples love me? Maybe that's what he means. Peter, do you love me more than these other disciples love me? These things, these others? No, I don't think that's what Jesus is asking here. Jesus would never ask anybody this. Jesus would never say, uh, he would never compare you or me with anybody else. So that theory, I'm sure, is wrong. Jesus is not saying, do you love me more than these other disciples love me? Jesus won't ever ask you the question, do you love me more than Billy Graham loved me? Do you love me more than Paul loved me? Do you love me more than Peter loved me? He, he will never ask us that question because Jesus does not compare our love for him with anybody else's love for him. Now, sometimes we like to compare our love for Jesus with other people's love for Jesus or their lack of love for Jesus. That's what Peter did. Remember in Matthew 26, Peter told him, Jesus, he said, even if everyone runs away because of you, I will never run away. Peter had compared his great love for Jesus with the other disciples' not so great love for Jesus. But Jesus will never compare our love with anybody else's love for him. The last thing right here, the last thing that Peter wants to do now is to have him compared to the other disciples because he had denied Jesus three times. Romans 14, 12 says, So then each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Jesus isn't going to compare us with anybody else. All right. Jesus asked, Do you love me? Do you love me more than these fish and boats and family business? Do you love me more than these other disciples love me? Here's the third one. Do you love me more than you love these other disciples? You see, it's not exactly known what Jesus meant here, but do you love me more than you love these other disciples? Now, let's take Peter out of the equation for a minute, out of the picture, and let's let Jesus focus on you and me for just a moment this morning. And let Jesus ask us that question. How much do you love me? Do you love me more than you love other people? That may be what he's asking Peter here. Do you love me more than you love other people? In other words, is there anybody in your life that you're putting ahead of Jesus? It's a good question. Now, I realize that you love other people differently than you love Jesus. You love your wife or husband or parents differently than you love Jesus. We're not talking about that. We're supposed to love other people differently. Love your wife differently than you love your children. Love and, and all that. But if there's anyone in your life that is causing you to not serve Jesus and worship Jesus and obey Jesus and love Jesus, if there's anyone in your life that's taking your love that you should have for Jesus away from you, that's drawing your love away from Jesus and on to them, then you love them more than you love Jesus. Now let's take a look at the response in verse 15, Peter's response. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these, whatever these are? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know that I love you. You know that I love you. Here's something in the Greek that we don't see in the English, and that's the word love. Now, if you've ever heard a sermon on this passage before, you know that there are two words for love that are mentioned here, two different words in the Greek, but the same word in the English. And I'm not going to try to make it complicated to you. So let's take a, work, a look at the word love. Jesus asked him, do you love me? more than these, and Peter responded, you know that I love you. Now these two loves, the word that Jesus uses is the word agape, agape. Peter responds with the Greek word philio. 
Both are translated love in the English, but they show different degrees of love in the Greek. Watch the difference, all right? Agape is the word that Jesus uses. And Jesus is asking Peter, do you really love me? This is an intense, urgent, committed love. Do you really love me over and above your love for anything else? That's what that word agape means. And the word that Peter uses, philio, is the word that means to be fond of, to be a friend of, to like somebody, to respect somebody. It's not as strong as the word that Jesus used. For example, let me give you an example. The word agape, how we can remember that. The word that Jesus used, do you love me, if you would just add a few words to that, you would get the idea of what that word means. This is what that word means. Do you really, 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 really love me? That's what agape means. And the word that Peter used doesn't have all those reallys in it. Okay? For example, for example, you're in a car. You're taking a trip. You got your kids in the car. And one of your kids says, Daddy, I have to go to the bathroom. Now that's filio. But if the child says, Daddy, I really, 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 really have to go to the bathroom. That's agape. Okay? You see the difference between the two words. All right. Uh, another illustration. You're 16 years old, and you're madly in love with your girlfriend. You really, 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 really love her. That's agape. And she tells you, let's just be friends. <laughs> That's phileo. It's also the kiss of death, I will say. <laughs> so there's a difference between these two words for love. Agape love, the one Jesus uses, is really, 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 really love me. So now Jesus is asking Peter, do you really, 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 really love me? And Peter responds, let's be friends. That's a pretty non-committal response, isn't it? That's not what Jesus was asking Peter. He didn't ask Peter if Peter liked him. He asked Peter, if you really, 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 really love me. And Jesus is asking Peter if he really loved him enough to forsake everything and to forsake everyone and to follow him. And right now, Peter cannot commit to that type of love. He just can't do it. He's afraid. He's afraid that if he says he really, 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 really loves Jesus, then he might fail Jesus again. And he just can't take that. Peter's not about to brag about really loving Jesus and then fail to live up to it like he did before. Peter's just being honest here. Peter isn't faking it anymore. Now Jesus has a reply to Peter's response. Look in verse 15, the end of verse, he said, Feed my lambs. Okay, Peter says, I love you, I respect you, I trust you. I like you. And then Jesus says, okay, then feed my lambs. Now, let's get really complicated this morning. You ready for complication? There are two different words in the Greek for love. There are two different words in the Greek for feed. Feed, okay? And we've got them both here. You don't see it in the English, but you see it in the Greek. So it says, feed my lambs. And this word feed here means to graze to put out to pasture. This is something passive, it's not active. It's not like on a cattle drive where you're driving cattle. This is just letting them out to pasture. Feed them, just let them go graze, okay? This is not like a coach. A coach is very active. If you've been watching some of the baseball games and softball games like we have nonstop, uh, you will see the coaches out there being very active, coaching the players. This is more like a playground monitor. There's a difference between a coach and a playground monitor. A playground monitor is just out there walking around. 
making sure everything's going okay, the kids aren't killing each other, and uh, they're just walking around. But a coach is very active, all right? So that's the difference between these two words here, feed. Jesus is saying, Peter, thank you for your honesty. Just hang in there. Your love for me is going to grow. The more that you serve me, it's going to grow over time. But until then, I've got a ministry for you, and my ministry for you is to graze my baby lambs. In other words, Peter's not ready yet for being a pastor. Right now, he needs to teach a children's class. That's where he's at in his life. Now, no offense to those who have taught children's classes, okay? You know, but that's not where Peter needs to be. But that's where he's at right now, okay? You see, before Peter wanted top billing, didn't he? Remember those chairs I had up here one Sunday, you know? Who's going to sit on your right, Jesus? Who's going to sit on your left? I want to sit on your right. I want top billing with you, Jesus. These other disciples, they can fend for themselves. But we want top billing. That was Peter. Now Peter has kind of humbled himself, been humbled. Uh, but Jesus is saying, even though you're not getting top billing, you can still have a ministry. And that's what Jesus is saying to every one of us. We can all have a ministry. Maybe we can't preach. Maybe you can't lead an adult Sunday school class. Maybe you can't lead a Bible study. I don't know. But you can work in ministry in the church. When we have vacation Bible school, you can work in vacation Bible school. You can visit the sick. You can visit the shut-in. We can encourage the discouraged. We can keep the nursery. We can teach a children's class in Sunday school. Jesus has a job for you. He has a job for everybody. One more about a job. So the new CEO decides it's time to rid the company of slackers. On a tour of the facilities, he notices a guy leaning against a wall doing nothing. The room was full of workers. Seeing a chance to show he meant business, he says to the guy, how much money do you make a week? A little surprised, the young man says, I make 400 a week, why? The CEO says, wait right here. He walks back to his office and comes back in two minutes. He hands the guy $1,600 in cash and says, Here's for four weeks' pay. Now get out and don't come back. Feeling like a boss now, the CEO looks around and says, Does anyone want to tell me what that goofball's job was around here? From across the room, a voice said, Pizza delivery guy from Domino's. <laughs> Jesus has a job for everybody, okay? And Jesus is telling us this morning, don't use the excuse that you don't love me enough. Jesus is saying, I've got a ministry for you. Besides, you can never love me enough. We can't love Jesus enough, so don't wait until you have to love him enough to serve him. You'll never get to that point. Maybe you can't coach. Maybe you can't coach, feed my lambs. But you can monitor the playground. Jesus is saying, if you say that you love me, even if your love is limited, then prove it, he says. Get busy. Do something for Jesus. Look in verse 16. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Jesus says, do you really, 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 really love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you like a brother, like a friend, like I respect you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep, tend my sheep. Now the same question, only this time he leaves off more than these. First time he said, do you love me more than these? Jesus left it off this time. You see here, uh, you see here that Peter uh, isn't to look at what anybody else is doing, how much anybody else loves Jesus, but Jesus is saying, look at me, Peter. Do you really, 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 really love me? Peter responds the same way he responded before. You know that we're great friends, but I still can't say that I love you with all of my heart. Peter is still afraid to totally commit himself to the Lord. Now, I want you to note the reply that Jesus gives to Peter. Verse 16, tend my sheep. 
the first time Jesus told Peter, graze my lambs. In other words, monitor the kids on the playground. Now Jesus is telling Peter, tend my sheep, be more like a coach, and supervise and rule over my sheep. So Jesus is giving him more responsibility. You see, Jesus has more confidence in Peter than Peter has in Peter. Here Jesus is telling Peter that Peter's not living up to his potential. Don't just go out and monitor the playground for the little kids. But do some coaching. Go out there and coach. He's not living up to his full potential. And let me just say this on the side. I don't think there's a one of us here this morning that's living up to our potential, including me. Are we living up to our potential? The potential that Jesus has given to us. Some people may be grazing the little lambs when Jesus wants you to coach his team. Some people may be monitoring the playground, and there's nothing wrong with that, but Jesus wants you to coach the team. That'd be like Tim Tebow. Anybody ever hear of Tim Tebow? Okay. That'd be like Tim Tebow teaching kickball to preschoolers when he should be out there playing in the NFL. I hope I get a lot of likes on that one. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with teaching preschoolers. There's nothing wrong with teaching the primary and the beginners and the nursery and the juniors and all that. That's a vital ministry, and we need all these ministries. If God has called you to do any of those ministries, then we need to do it. But that's not what Jesus is calling Peter to do. Jesus wants Peter to live up to his potential. God has a ministry a place, and a calling for everybody, including everybody here. Are we doing what God has called us to do? Look at verse 17. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. All right, let's look at this. Now, this time, Jesus doesn't say to Peter, do you really, 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 really love me? He doesn't say that. He uses the same word that Peter used. Peter, am I your friend? Do you respect me? Do you love me that way? He uses Peter's words. Peter, do you really think highly of me? You see, Jesus had to lower his standard of love. Why? Because Jesus wants Peter's confession of his love to equal the condition of his heart. Peter, no more games, no more pride, no more bragging, no more pretending. Let's be perfectly honest with each other, Peter. Peter, do you have a fondness for me? Do you have a respect for me as your friend? Now, how does Peter respond to this? Verse 17, the end of the verse. And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that, yes, I feel you. I love you. I love you. He uses the same word now that Jesus uses. He says, yes, I do love you in that way. And now look at the end of the verse. He says, or rather, first of the verse, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time. Now look at this word, grieved. You don't see this in the English, but in the Greek there are two different words. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. The word grieved means grieved, okay? And you don't get two different words for this one. It means what it says. Peter was grieved. Why was Peter grieved? Peter was grieved because Jesus had to repeat it three times. Peter was grieved because Jesus had to come down to Peter's level of love. It really doesn't matter why Peter was grieved, but he was grieved. Nevertheless, Peter wants Jesus to look deep into Peter's heart. Lord, you know all things, he says. That's what Peter says. Lord, you can look deep into my heart. Lord, you know what my heart is. 
You know how I really feel about you? Look deep into my heart. Peter wants Jesus to see that his love for Jesus is genuine. He's not bragging this time. He's not going to make bold statements. That Peter really means what he's saying. That's what Jesus wants to see. Now listen to Jesus' reply. Verse 17. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. In other words, this is a combination of the other two replies. Feed my sheep. Graze my adult sheep. Now, what's the important thing here? The important thing here is that Jesus is putting Peter back into service. That's the important thing. He's putting Peter back in service. Jesus is telling Peter to be whatever kind of shepherd, to do whatever kind of of feeding that he needs to do to whatever kind of flock that God gives him. Just do it, Peter. Just do it. Peter, if I ask you to be a playground monitor, just trust me and do it. Peter, if I ask you to pastor a church, Peter, just trust me and do it. Obey me. But instead of not serving me because your love isn't as great as it should be, Just serve me with the love that you have. And then you know what's going to happen, Peter? When you serve me with the love that you have, your love is going to go greater and grow greater and grow greater in time. As you see me work in your life, Peter, your love for me is going to grow. And that's the lesson that Jesus has for us. Jesus is asking us here this morning, how much do you love me? Maybe he's also asking, do you even like me? Do you even like me? You see, every decision we make, every choice that we make, answers this question, how much do you love Jesus? Do we live our life day in and day out like we love Jesus? Do we like being around him? Do we like talking to him? Do we like thinking about him? Do we like giving to him? Do we like giving him access to our very thoughts and our actions and plans? Or are we more at home in the world? Jesus wants Peter to examine his heart. And Jesus wants wants us to examine our hearts this morning. Jesus is asking you and Jesus is asking me, how much do you love me? How much do you really love me? Do you love me? Then prove it. Serve me. If you love him, even if you should love him more, and we all should, then Jesus has a ministry for you. Serve him, and your love for him will grow stronger. Jesus says to us here this morning, let's examine our hearts. Let's all stand as we pray together. Father, we thank you that you have given us the ability to love you and serve you. You've given us the ability to trust you. And even though we fail you so many times, Lord, you're always there leading us back into fellowship with you, just like you did for Peter. Lord, you always want to restore fellowship with us. Father, in spite of our failures, we love you. And Father, may we do the ministry that you have given us, whatever it is. May we do it with a full heart of love, a full heart of faith, and a full heart of trust. Lord, we love you. We really do. You know that we love you. But Lord, may our love grow deeper and stronger as we trust you. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen.